I'm Shiva Reinhardt. This is a video about how yoga may affect your neck. I went for a long time feeling pain in my neck as a result of yoga classes because in many yoga poses, almost every yoga pose, there is a prescribed drifty or gazing point that in the traditional system of yoga, the classical Indian system of yoga, they have you gazing at a certain point in almost every single pose. So, for example, um, the triangle pose, something like this, and they have you gazing up at your hand. Similarly, maybe in a lunge, again, they'll have you have you gazing up. So you can see here the back of my neck is totally crunched and tight. And if you practice yoga a lot, it can really wind up affecting you, especially if your neck is already tight. It can make your neck over tight. And what I found really helped me was forest yoga. So you can see more about forest yoga on her website. Her name is Anna Forrest. She developed it. It's forestyoga.com. Forest with two R's. And I'm going to show you a few moves, a few modifications that she uses in all poses to get rid of this neck thing. <laughs> because it's really not important to strengthen our necks at this point because our necks are already too strong. They're too tight. The grand majority of people. There may be a small percentage that their neck is weak, but the grand majority of people, their neck is too tight. So, start with the first one as an example in a twisting posture. So, say you're doing a simple twist, and in most yoga classes, they will have you looking back and craning over your shoulder. And again, it's twisting the neck and it's tightening the muscles of the neck on one side. So, very simple modification is to bring your head back to center. Just keep your neck at neutral throughout the whole pose. You do not need to crank your neck around. You may need to focus more on your twist throughout the back in order to get a good twist, but you do not have to crank your neck around. In my opinion, it doesn't add to the pose. Same thing in triangle pose. And the alignment looks funny when you relax your neck, I will admit. But there really is no reason to be looking up at your thumb. In fact, if you relax your neck this way in every pose, you're going to get a great neck stretch. And it's actually going to help release your neck. So releasing your neck and letting it go is a better option than cranking it up. You can probably see my neck muscles standing out, it's just not necessary. So another pose here that works directly on the neck, this is called neck release pose. And you can have your legs either in half lotus, you can have them in easy seat. How you have your legs is not important. Take your hand, point the fingers towards you, palm facing down, and sit on your hand. This is called neck release pose. Sit on your hand to anchor your arm down and lean away from that arm. And then let your neck and head relax down away from that shoulder. And then inhale, reach the other arm up and over. And let your fingers come to your jawline. You can also do the sitting in a chair. You don't have to be sitting on the ground. Now, you're not pulling on this arm at all, you're not pulling on your head, you're just letting gravity help weigh down the head and stretch up the neck. So if you don't feel a stretch in your neck yet, lean a little bit more, let the head go down, and you will start to feel a really delicious stretch on the side of your neck. So here, take a deep breath into the upper back and keep your chest lifted. Don't let the chest collapse. Then bring your head down about an inch. We're now getting into a different place along the back of the neck. You can readjust that arm and take a breath here. Chest stays lifted. And then it comes down one more inch. Again, I readjust the hand so that it's giving me maximum stretch. Take a breath.
and then head comes down to the center. You can release your arms. Take a breath with your head down in the center to release the back of the neck. And then slowly lift the head up. Now we're articulating the neck bones. Lift your head until your eyes point towards the ceiling. Not craning the neck at all. Just a very gentle articulation of the joints. And then bring your head back to center. Okay, let's do the other side. Take your other hand, point the fingers towards you. Palm facing down. Sit on your hand, anchor that hand down. Lean away from your arm. Let your head go down. Let that head relax. And then inhale, other arm comes up and over. Fingers along the jawline, keep your chest lifted. Take a deep inhale here, breathe into upper back. Let your breath reach into those neck muscles, those upper back muscles and stretch them out. Bring your head down about an inch. Getting onto the back of the neck, a little bit, deep breath here. And then bring the neck down one more inch. Still slightly diagonal, keep lifting the chest, deep breath. And then release both hands, bring the head to center and down. Let's do a gentle neck roll all the way around, slowly, again, so that you can feel the bones moving. You may feel some crunchies, cracklies, and that's fine. Once you've gone all the way around, go in the other direction. And then bring your head back to center. So those modifications I showed you in some of the standard poses with letting your neck relax, that works for all of them. In warrior, you can look straight ahead. In any pose whatsoever, you can let your neck go. Yes, your spine will not be in a straight line. At the neck, it'll be cr cranked over, but it's relaxing your neck. It's good for it. You can do it. It may be hard if you're going to a class where the teacher is teaching you and telling you what to do. You may not be able to do it there because the teacher wants you to follow his or her instructions. But if you're doing DVDs at home, YouTube videos, any kind of at-home yoga, you can always add that modification in. If it hurts your neck, don't do it. This in itself has saved my neck. My neck feels a thousand times better than it ever did, and it's still strong. I hope that helps you. Thank you for watching. Namaste.